Hello, my name's David, and in this video, we're going to take a look at editing this picture, which I found on one of the stock websites. Now, the expression on this guy's face, the look in his eyes is absolutely terrific. The photographer has done an amazing job. Once you've looked at that, your eye then starts to wander. The background, a little bit distracting and a bit bright. The window, bright again, as well as his hoodie. So let's take a look at doing some editing to the adjustments tab with this we're going to go straight to levels now when levels opens yes you can see there is a gap in the histogram always tempting to come to the white levels in this case moving it in but as we move it in the areas that are distracting are becoming rather bright so i'm going to leave this back where it was we are going to darken the image down. We're going to come to the gamma slider. By moving it to the right, we introduce more of the darker pixels. So I'm going to take it over to round about this area here, just backing it up a little bit. That looks pretty good. Let's click to accept it. What we've also done is we've enriched the colors in the picture, which is not really what we want to do. So let's come over to the toolbox. We're going to pick up the elliptical marquee tool, which is in with the rectangular marquee tool as well. And with this, if we just look at the menu bar, we got mode is new, feather is zero pixels. I am not going to feather it and I'll explain why in just a moment. From center, we've also got this ticked. So let's come down to this area here, just between the eyes. I'm going to click down, dragging it out because it's from center. This area here, it came out from there but we've now selected the inside. We want to work on the outside. So heading up to select, coming down to invert pixel selection, you can now see the marching ants. Right, let's head back down to the adjustments. This time we're gonna to go to HSL, hue saturation luminance. We're gonna to go to the luminosity shift. I'm gonna take it to the left-hand side. We're darkening down, the colors are going as well. Just gonna back it up a touch. Let's go to this sort of area there, minus, what we got, minus 17, that looks pretty good. Let's click to accept it. Right, you can see this is the area that we've now got in the mask. Command D, Control D, removes the selection. We can now see a hard edge. As you remember, I didn't feather the pixels. Why didn't I feather it? Well, how much do you feather it by? Is it 5, 10, 15? I haven't got a clue. However, if we come down to a live filter layer and we go to Gaussian Blue, notice the way it's attached itself to our HSL. So it's working directly with this layer. If I now lift this up, let's take the radius up. And as I start to take the radius up, notice that edge now beginning to feather. And I can take it to that area. There looks pretty good. Let's click to accept it, but there's more. Let's click on the mask so it's live. I'm going to press V on the keyboard or pick up the move tool. The move tool has now gone around that selection and we can make it bigger. Let's take it over the area of the face. We can readjust that uh, elliptical. Yeah, just getting a little bit of light on his beanie. That looks good like that. Pressing H on the keyboard to give me back the hand tool. The next thing we're going to do is darken down the background. Right, let's head over to the toolbox. Now in with the marquee tool, right down the bottom, we've got the freehand selection tool. Now with this, I've got the freehand, and if we come across, I've got new, and we're gonna go feather. Yes, I am gonna feather this. I'm gonna take it, I think 50 pixels should be sufficient with this. Right, let's just click on the background layer for a start. So there it is, that's now our live layer. Let's click down, let's come around this area here, just over the shoulder, following the hoodie around roughly. It doesn't matter if you make a bit of a mistake, which I have just done so I can show you, because you can fix this just a little bit later. So let's come up over that black area here, because I want to darken down the inside of the frame. And let's just reposition my mouse and up over the top, and there it is coming back to the start. There is our selection. Right, heading down to adjustments. This time I'm gonna to go to brightness and contrast. I'm gonna take the brightness down. That's looking better like this. Just a little bit too much color for my liking. So what I'm gonna do is come to contrast. And as we start to take the contrast down, you can see the color disappearing as well. Perhaps just a little bit darker. 
that area will do nicely. I'm going to use Command D, Control D to deselect. Let's click to accept it. Right, I said about a mistake. Can't really see it here because it's against the black area. But let's have a look at the mask. If I press Alt or Option, let's click on the mask. There it is. There's that 50 pixel. Just took the edge off it. There's the mistake I made. Now, as we've seen, we can't see it on the image because I'm over a black area. But to fix it, because if you are on the lighter area of your image, you need to remove it. So I'm going to pick up the brush tool. Looking at it, I've got a soft edge brush. And if I just press X on the keyboard, white is now the foreground color. And if we come over it, you can paint in the mask. If I press X, of course, you can sort of remove the mask and then you'll be able to see through it. Let's just take a look. Let's click on the background. There it is, this area. So just press in X again, so we can have paint on the mask to remove that. Right, that looks pretty good. Clicking on the background layer. Let's have a look at his hoodie. Over to the toolbox. This time I'm going to use the selection brush tool. Now with this, I've got the add. There's the size of the brush, snap to edge. Yep, I'm gonna go for soft edges and um, just clicking, going over here. Let's go over the neck as well, over the rest of the hoodie. Just coming around here. That looks good. Right, I'm going to head up to Refine. Just going to do a quick job with this. Coming straight to Feather. Let's take the Feather up into this area here. Just look at the edges there, just feathered off nicely. Perhaps just a little bit more. Just waiting for it. There it goes. Click and apply. Job done. Right, say job done, we haven't done it yet, so let's go to adjustments. We're going to come up to the levels, and we're going to take the gamma slider across. I'm going to darken it down using this, just into that area. Command D, Control D to deselect, and just taking it over a little bit more. That will do nicely. Don't forget, everything with this is completely adjustable. Let's just double click. I'm going to call this what it is, which is hoodie and... Let's call this what it is, which is, uh, I'm going to call, I'm just going to call it wall. So we know what it is. I'm going to call it background, but of course we have got a background layer. Now with all of these, always better to overdo it because what you can do is you can just come to the opacity slider. You can just fade it down a touch or two, should you want to, perhaps something like this. Right, let's take it one stage further again. And I must be honest, it is my favorite technique. Before we do that, I'm just gonna click so we're on the top layer of the layer stack. Now, in a recent video, we set up a black and white preset and black and white could work a treat with this image. So let's go to the adjustments. We're gonna to go to black and white. This is the preset that we set up for black and white. When we click on it, there's Affinity's version. Command Z, Control Z is our version. And of course you can adjust it as well. For example, if you think the face is just a little bit bright, I can just drop it down to something like this. That could work a treat. I'm gonna take it back where it was. So I'm gonna leave it, it was about there. Let's close this down. Let's come over to the layers. Something else you might like to try is if you come to the opacity slider, you can fade it down. So you can fade the black and white into the color version that could really add to the mood of the picture. But my favorite technique of all is just changing the blend mode to multiply. I really like using black and white with color images. It can really enhance the colors, the tones, and set the mood. And let's just have a look. Perhaps something like this. That looks a treat. Really adds to the mystery of the picture, doesn't it? So it's entirely up to you. You may like to just leave it like this, but everything is going to be completely adjustable when you save it in layers. So let's just switch this back on and let's come down to the bottom layer. I'm going to press shift on the keyboard, clicking down on the bottom layer because I held down shift. They're now all selected. That's what we started off with. There is our finished image. I think that really helps to add to the mood of the picture. Go on, give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. And don't forget to subscribe. Plenty more videos to come. Click that little bell icon. You'll receive a notification every time a new video is posted. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.